Hello, my friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. It is Labor Day. Happy Labor Day. At least it is here in Missouri and in the United States. Um, when you live in this uh, rural farm life, uh, you don't hardly notice the difference. <laughs> Holidays just come and go and you don't really even pay any attention to them. But I know it's important to a lot of you out there that are still working on a daily basis. So, happy Labor Day. September 4th, Monday. And on Mondays, like usual, we have a lot to talk about, a lot to cover. Uh, first thing is, uh, it's okay if you disagree with me. I can't, af I can't force you to be right. Uh, and then people ask me, where do you get all these weird t-shirts? Well, my daughters seem to have a competition on trying to outdo each other. <laughs> my daughter, Rochelle, in Ohio, uh, the one with the two young grandsons, Trinian and Layton, uh, she, I think she kind of started it. And then my other daughter, my older, oldest daughter, or oldest child even, uh, Lisa in uh, Eureka, Missouri, She's kind of jumped on the bandwagon, too. I think this one came from Rochelle. I'm not 100% sure anymore. Hard to keep it all straight. Uh, I released two videos over the weekend. I hope you saw those. Uh, one of, it was kind of the uh, rubber baby buggy bumper uh, video where I put the rubber bumper on the back of the horse trailer to keep the horse's hooves from hitting the steel as they go in the trailer. And uh, that one didn't get a lot of views, but uh, I did also, uh, you know, release that one during our live uh, show on Thursday evening. Uh, that was kind of like the halftime show. So I released on its on, in its own right as a video. And then um, I released the, uh, worked on it pretty much, uh, took almost a whole day to make that video on the retaining wall. And I uh, got it out late last night. And... Uh, Anyway, that one's getting quite a few views, and, you know, I put in the uh, thumbnail that I was attacked, and that was no exaggeration. That, I mean, it was sort of clickbait in the sense that it makes a, a good uh, thumbnail, but in the real sense, I was attacked. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it was no lie, let's just say it that way. I wasn't stretching anything, because, man, those varmints were just attacking me left and right out there while I was building that wall. Let's see, uh, we have a live show coming on uh, Lyric Live Theater in Newburgh on uh, September 30th, 7 o'clock p.m. Lyric Live Theater is an old, old theater. Uh, it was probably, probably real early 1900s. It could have been late 1800s, possibly. Uh, it's in... Uh, Newburgh, Missouri. Newburgh used to be a real boom town uh, years ago, and it even had a roundhouse for the uh, trains to turn around, uh, but no more. Uh, it's pretty much dead. There's about, about the only thing in Newburgh anymore are uh, taverns and churches, and that's pretty much the truth of it. There's just about as many of each one. Um, Let's see, uh, but anyway, we're playing a live show there on uh, September 30th, 7 p.m. at the theater. It's a real cool little theater. It, You know, we enjoy it. We never have a very big crowd, but if you're available and able to put that on your calendar, please do so. Uh, and just because I can tell you, on October 26th, uh, we're playing uh, for the Mark Twain Elementary School. Uh, I do the... I used to do three schools pretty much every single year. Um, since COVID, that's kind of changed. Right now, Mark Twain's about the only one we're doing. But anyway, that's on October 26th. The uh, GoPro camera auction hasn't gone as well as I was hoping. Um, I think there's only one bid on it right now, and I don't think it's hit my minimum. I think my minimum was $290, if I'm not mistaken. It's at, presently at $275. So somebody's going to get a steel deal, and I'm going to get ripped off. So there you go. <laughs> if uh, if you're in the market for a GoPro camera, uh, this would be a good way to save a bunch of money on basically a brand new camera. Uh, it's up in perfect shape. 
And anyway, all you have to do is go to my auction page, www.rosastringworks.com, and click on the Auctions tab. And uh, then click on Bid Now. And that doesn't mean you're bidding immediately. That just that will bring up the camera where you can see pictures and stuff. And then you can put a bid in if you want to. You do have to register first. And on the very first page there, there's a link to register in case you want to register. Uh, let's see. What's next? I got a new toy, a new laser level. People have been watching my videos and really sending me a lot of offers lately. And this was another freebie. Um, this is, I don't accept most of them, by the way. I, I, I honestly turned down, well, probably up to this point, 99% of them I've turned down. But I'm starting to accept a few of them that I can use. And this one is one that I will use and make use of. This is a laser level, but it's a different kind of laser level than I used on building the retaining wall. The retaining wall is a kind of a, a it's like a tripod level, the old tripod level that you look through. But it has a laser that sends out a beam on a level plane. And then you use a uh, indicator on a stick going up and down. And you can check your grade. And you can check level on uh, any place out there in the floor. Like if you want to make sure that your floor is perfectly level. It's perfect for that kind of thing. Or if you're checking your foundation for your wall, you can make sure it's perfectly level. That's that kind of level. This is a little different kind of level, very similar but different in that it's, um, by the way, this is called, uh, uh, well, I thought it was laser goo is what it looks like, it, 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 or laser goo, L-A-S-G-O-O. -O. I'm not really sure. It's one of these branded, th off-branded things that's a little different. Here, if you look, it's got uh, Laz goo again, but then here it's got LG3D laser level so that's about all i know about it uh it says made in china rohs i don't know if that's that's probably just something to do with the uh made in china thing yeah lasgu is what it looks like lasgu laser level self uh so yeah, it's got a i don't know just reading things that i see on the box anyway i have not opened it yet i i I opened it this far, and I did unzip this, so I just want to be truthful, but I have not taken anything out of the box yet. Whoops. There's, looks like it's got a reasonably thick manual there. You know, well, that's probably because it's different languages. Yeah, it's a bunch of different languages, so it's not that thick. Um, but it looks like it comes with a manual. I haven't even taken it out of the case. Don't even know how to get it out of the case, but this is what it looks like in the case. It, uh, I don't know if I t take parts out first or take this plastic out. I really don't know. <laughs> it doesn't seem to want to come out very easily. Here's a charging cord, apparently. This looks like some sort of a remote. I think this is a battery. That's what it looks like, a battery. And... Okay, maybe I'm getting it out of here now. Yeah, here we go. So there's the main deal. Now what this does is it shoots a level uh, line this way and it shoots a level line this way. And you can spin this around on a tripod and it's self-leveling so that that line that's going vertical on your wall is a perfectly uh, level line so like if you were trying to make sure a, a you know a doorway was level or whatever this you could use this for that or you could you know like if if you had a giant picture or maybe a, a large tv screen and you wanted to make sure it was perfectly level this way or you know level this way either one and it'd be the same difference um, you know, so that's the kind of thing. This thing shoots a bright beam, but this is made for indoor use primarily. This probably won't work outdoors. You probably won't be able to see the, the laser lines unless it would be overcast or dark day or something. Um, this looks like this is some sort of a mount. That's what I think it is, but I can't. It just seems really stuck. Doesn't seem to want to come out of there. See if I can get it out of there. There it is. Okay, yeah, and I think that's just some sort of a mount. Don't know anything about it yet. But 
I am. I told them that if they sent it to me, I mean, they were making the offer. I didn't approach them. They approached me. I told them if they sent it to me, I would do a nice video with it. So there you go. I don't have a lot of use for one of these. I'll just be honest. I don't really have a big use, but uh, it will come in handy on a lot of different uh, projects. So you'll see it in a future video. I'm not just sure when I'll get to that, but I'll try to get to it, you know, reasonably soon. Well, anyway, it looks like a pretty nice outfit, really. Um, the deer antler saddles. If you were watching the Shop Talk Friday, I kind of ended the Shop Talk a little bit abruptly. And the reason I did that was because Caleb walked in. Caleb was here to uh, pick up the antler business from me. He took all the... All the antler supply I had, and he took all of the um, little jigs and fixtures and shop-made tools that I had made for doing the antler uh, saddles. And uh, he took it all. It's all gone. And uh, it's amazing how much room that cleared out in my shop. <laughs> I, I didn't think it would take out, hardly be noticeable, but there was a lot of stuff in here. And uh, so he took all that, and uh, I sold it to him at a really really discount price. Um, yeah, I just decided it was time to let some new blood get in there. So I don't know when he will make those available for sale, but if you, uh, but I can just tell you, if you're interested in deer antler saddles, I'm not the guy anymore. It will be Caleb. And uh, I did make some su suggestions to him to increase his business quite a bit. And I could have increased mine quite a bit, I just didn't have time. There wasn't enough of me to go around as it was. And uh, anyway, the way he can increase his business is to start selling uh, deer antler blanks, um, saddle blanks for guitars. Um, lots and lots and lots of people ask for those over the years, and I just turned them all down for the most part. Um, so anyway, uh, he's going to look into that so he can expand his business into the guitars, and he could expand his uh, business... Uh, or help himself out uh, if he can learn, if he could find some sort of a, um, I don't know, some sort of a um, polymer, you know, super glue type substance that would penetrate the, por uh, the porous parts of the antler and stiffen it up. I threw a lot of the antler away because it was porous. But if you could find, you know, like if you just have one solid uh, bone face, like the front of the saddle, if the, if that's, uh, solid and maybe the back's real porous. If you had a way to stiffen that up and make it rock hard, it would be fine. It would still transfer the sound through that bone very well, and and the solid part that you solid up wouldn't hurt anything either. So uh, anyway, I suggested that he look into that. I never did bother with that either. Although I did start CA gluing all the uh, light porosity that was in the saddles because almost every one of them has that. And over the last couple of years, I was CA gluing pretty much all of that. So, and that did work pretty well. So maybe that's all, maybe that's the answer itself, just using the CA glue. But I didn't do any testing or experiments. So I suggested a lot of those kinds of things to him. And uh, I think he's planning to take it to the next level. And uh, I wish him well with it. Uh, Caleb's a real good guy. And uh, I think you should... Uh, you know, help him out if you can. If you have deer antler that you can send to Caleb, he's you can find him on Caleb Mills Guitars on YouTube. Caleb Mills Guitars, C A L E B Mills M I L L S Guitars. Well, that's uh, the ma the majority of the stuff that I wanted to tell you up to this um, point. Well, let's see. I have one more point, a talking point, and that is the uh, mandolin that I'm working on. That little mandolin. That's not it in that case. That's my mandolin. But on the other side, there's a little case there. That little mandolin, uh, the one that had the neck out of it, uh, the neck's back in it, but I have not put the fretboard back on yet and set it up yet. So I haven't made any further progress. But I do have three short videos for you. Uh, we have 96 viewers at the moment and a few questions scrolling up the screen it looks like. Here's the first short little video clip. Well I'm down at the big metal building to show you what I get to do today. 
This building is 42 by 72, in case you're wondering. And no matter how big you build a building, it's never big enough. Just keep that in mind. See, that big thing and this big thing, they got to move. Why do they have to move? Because of this. You can barely see it in the dark, but that big hay rake has to come out of here. By the way, while we're here, take a look. There's a pile of lumber, pile of lumber, lots of piles of lumber that I've cut on my sawmill. So does my sawmill work? Yes. So I'll show you why I need to move the hay rake. Yeah, and that hay rake uh, is really a neat little hay rake. It's a three-point hitch type hay rake. Uh, somebody told me that once you go to a three-point hitch hay rake, you won't go back. And they're right on that, at least in that style of hay rake. Now, they make other styles, and that's a different thing. But, but on that style, the kind that rotates uh, kind of horizontally, if you will, and throws the hay off to one side... Um, they make pull types, and that's the most common one of those is a pull type. But uh, that three-point hitch, man, that that's the best hay rake I've ever ever been around for that style of hay rake. Um, the next uh, th uh, little video clip shows you why I need to get the hay rake out. So the hay rake has to come out so that I can rake all of this. How did that all get cut, you might be asking? Well, the good old Ford tractor and my New Holland sickle bar, which I think I showed you last week in a vlog, that bar was broke. Not the whole big thing, but just the cutter part of the bar. And it's not broke anymore, and it cuts really good. This New Holland uh, sickle bar. These are fairly highly sought after because it has what they call a balanced head. This thing rotates here, and you can point that thing at any angle. You can go up, down, side, you know, anything you want down the hill, and it will still cut because of this balanced head. So it's a highly sought after type sickle bar. They sell pretty high dollar these days. I would entertain an offer for this if somebody's interested in buying one of these. And it does that, so it does it pretty well. Yeah, it, it was a, a most of a day project to fix that um, after that uh, broke. But I was able to weld it up and get it to hold really well and put new cutters on it, sharpen it up, etc. And, you know, it just cut perfectly. It, and you will see a video on me repairing that uh, uh, sickle bar in the near future not sure just when i'll get that out but it'll come out one of these days and let's see let's just take a quick look at the pond uh, status too so i thought i'd give you a current status of the pond project you can see the pile of gravel there it's bigger than it looks that's a pretty big pile of gravel i don't know how many tons but there's a lot there and the status here is that uh you can see the dam has been all leveled off, smoothed off, seeded and strawed, courtesy of Sue Rosa. She did all that herself. So let me just see. I always like to see how much water is coming in and going out just for my own benefit, just because I think it's interesting to see uh, if we've maintained the water level. There's definitely water going in. Let's see if there's water coming out. Whoa, I'm about to fall down. Well, there's water coming out, but I got to be honest, it's just kind of a trickle. But it is coming out. So that means that the pond is holding water pretty well. And it's been kind of dry the last, you know, four or five days, so evaporation and just soaking into the bank and all that causes a lot of the problem but we're getting there i guess you saw my video on building the retaining wall 
I was attacked, and that was the title of the video, Attacked. Or at least that was the title of the thumbnail. Yeah, you know, at the risk of bragging on myself here or, or ringing my own bell, I impressed myself building that wall. You, you got to think about that. <laughs> Here I am. I'll be 69 in another month or so. And, uh, you know, uh, I built that wall in four mornings. Just, you know, two and a half to maybe three and a half hours each morning. And uh, I think I did pretty good <laughs> to get that much done in just the, just the morning time. You know, if you took 10 years off of me and gave me a little cooler day, I could have built that whole wall in one day. <laughs> All by myself. So, anyway, it worked out pretty good. And I hope you did see that video. If you haven't seen it, I think you'll enjoy it if you watch it. And let me see, what else do I have on my list here today? Oh, um, I mentioned that that uh, hay rake, or that hay cutter the sickle bar was for sale so if anybody's interested in that um, you know you can shoot me an email rosastringworks at gmail.com I also am going to be selling the balers I have an Oliver hay baler square baler and I have a New Holland square baler now the New Holland square baler um, mechanically is up in pretty decent shape but uh, cosmetically I mean uh, you know like if you were talking about a car the body it needs a lot of body work in other words there's a lot of rusted out sheet metal on it uh, the sheet metal could be replaced and welded back in and and I had intentions of doing that I just you know too many irons in the fire and uh, the the old Oliver Baylor um, it, it's up in pretty darn good shape again too mechanically both of them have some issues with their not tires and uh, that's pretty common on square balers so I just am over it and uh, I'm tempted to sell all of the uh, hanging equipment I might not sell that rake that rake's kind of unique and and it's pretty handy um, and we might you know get some more equipment some different kinds of equipment more modern style type equipment this this type of equipment is still very popular for the hobby farmers and things like that but I'm thinking about uh, upgrading and trying something different next year and we'll see how that goes. That may not happen either. But uh, anyway, in case anybody's interested, so we do have the two balers and the sickle bar up for sale at this point. Um, let's see. What else? Is that it? Or have I got something else here? I think that's all I was going to talk about. So let me go to the comments and see. It looks like Charles Salkowitz was the very first person in from Florida's Sun Coast. And, uh, and then it looks like Knut Edvin in Norway was second. And uh, Trevor Bartlett from Newfoundland was third. Now, these were before we went live. And then after we went live, looks like Nella Yema was the first one to check in. Happy Labor Day, she says, from Detroit. And then uh, Chuck Heidbreeder from St. James, Missouri. Well, Chuck, again, I don't remember if we've met or not. But if we haven't, uh, come to the next uh, jam there in St. James. Well... I keep saying that. I'm not sure I'm going. <laughs> There's some issues there, and I'm not really sure I'm going back, but I don't know. I'll probably go back. Um, it's on the uh, second Tuesday of every... I'm sorry. It's on the second Friday. <laughs> Why did I say Tuesday? Because of the Dickie's Barbecue Jam, I guess. It's on the second Friday of every month at the Senior Sitter in St. James. Uh, Ronald Todd, Level and... Plum, yes, level and plum. Uh, he's just giving, hitting me with the terms, you know. I, I know those terms, but, you know, I don't always think of every term when I'm on camera. Um, <laughs> Scott Roberts says, does it say Las Goo or Las God? I'm pretty sure it says La, uh, Las Goo, G-O-O. -O. It looks, those two letters look identical to me. So, uh, anyway, that's what I'm saying. Now, this is a D up here. So, it's LG3D. Um, let's see. The next one. Uh, 
Oh, he, uh, he, Chuck says he cut his hedges with uh, one of those lasers after dark. And he, you can see the uh, lines then, I guess. Uh, Jay Wiggs says, try bone cement on the antler, I suppose. Uh, Lucy Girl, question mark, says, uh, would y hardening agents they use for wood work for that? It's possible. I don't really know. I never really looked into it. I know that the th real thin CA glue penetrates like crazy. I mean, in fact, you got to put it on two or three times. You need something that penetrates. As long as it penetrates and gets rock hard, it should be fine. And I think the, uh, the uh, CA glue is probably the easiest route to go. Uh, but then again, there may be something better. And if you find something even better, that would be the way to go. Marigold Time says, can you borrow Oliver's fly spray or is it harmful to humans? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't get me wrong. I, it, that already crossed my mind, but I just don't know if that stuff is, is good for humans or not. But I know it's uh, pretty potent stuff and it's uh, real oily, you know, like residue type stuff too, or most of them are. So... I don't think I'll be spraying that on me. Uh, when my Purple Martins were here, I'm during the whole time they were here, I think I saw two horseflies at the most. I was seeing two a minute out there while I was building that wall. <laughs> oh my gosh. Of course, no, no, and the Martins had been gone almost a month when I was building that wall. So they were ramped up. Is there any more... Uh, bone cement is used for orthopedic surgery. Well, that probably would work. Of course, you'd probably have to sell your car to buy it, but uh, I, I don't know. You know, I, I don't know anything about that bone cement, but it would be a, a good option if it is a good option. You know, it's one of those deals. But uh, anyway, let's see. There is another question popped up there. Benita Drager, Drager has the corner of your son's field dried out. Well, you know, uh, I don't think he's even looked at it yet, um, but I would say it has to ha have dried out because you got to think about that 24-7, there was water pouring in there. And often it was a lot more water than that little trickle that you see. Often there's a lot of water coming out of there. It just depends on whether it's been raining and how long it's been dry and all that sort of thing. But regardless, 24 7 there's water draining out there and uh yeah it, it was a swamp man i mean it was a swamp you couldn't drive anything through there you couldn't even go through there with a with the uh, skid steer with the tracks you'd just <laughs> sink down but i so i don't really know if it's dried out well enough yet but it's probably drivable at this point i would at least think but that that's just a guess on my part but I guess that's going to be it for today. I guess I'm going to have to go down there and start shuffling things around so I can get that dang hay rake out. And I always have to go over it. I mean, it holds up pretty well, but, you know, you can't just readily get parts for that anymore. So uh, a lot of the bushings wear out and I have to make new bushings and stuff. So I'll have to go down there and test it and shake it around and make sure it's all tight again. And I may have to make another bushing or two and put them in there. Um, let's see, I saw it scroll up again. Uh, have you seen Ballad of Buster Scruggs? You look, sound, and sing just like him. Listen to the opening song, Cool Water. No, I don't know anything about that, fella. <laughs> you know, during my life, I have been told so many times, I mean, like so many times, that you are a dead ringer for such and so and such and so, and you sound exactly like such and so. <laughs> I've been told that so many times, I couldn't even tell you. But uh, so far, I haven't actually seen anybody that, that I think looks like me or sounds like me. <laughs> I don't know. It's all from your perspective, I guess. Uh, yeah, Starbond Thin uh, CA absorbs great. Yeah, that's exactly what I've been using with Starbond Thin. Um, where do the Purple Martins and why do they leave? Uh, the Purple, and, you know, again, there's something here on my screen There's that, that's cutting off. 
It's just so dumb. I don't know why. But, so I couldn't read the whole thing. But anyway, where, uh, where do they go and where, uh, why do they leave so early? Well, purple martins, the way I understand it, migrate all the way down to the Amazon. And uh, they, uh, you know, I guess you'd say winter down there. But for them, it's summer down there. So they go down there for the, they stay in constant summer for the most part. And I assume they raise more babies down there, but I don't know that. But uh, anyway, uh, I, all I know is, generally speaking, whenever, once you finally get Purple Martins and, uh, you know, you get them established, then generally they will come back every year. And not only that, but usually they increase in number by a few. In other words, the babies that they have come back. And so, you know, you just keep increasing and increasing. And uh, so I've got to get more houses up next year for sure. And uh, why did they leave so early? Well, and I assume that that's just because it's so far. You know, uh, they, it's, it's, it's very strange about those purple martins. A lot of people said, if you don't get them by uh, the end of March, you don't get them. Well, I've gotten them as late as July already. I'm, I'm not kidding you. One year I got them in July, which I thought was crazy late. I mean, like crazy late. Well, then they stayed longer because they have to raise their babies and stuff. But the ones that come early, they pretty much leave early. So uh, this year I got them in, I think it was, you know, maybe real late April or early May, somewhere in there. Um, I think it was late April. And then they left by, you know, well, they left by end of July, really. So they've been gone quite a while. Yeah, but I do love my Purple Martins. I, I like to hear them chatter. They just, they, they, quite honestly, if you had them real close to your house, they'd probably drive you crazy because they chatter a lot and they're really loud. You can hear them. That's two and a half to three football lengths from my house. And if you step outside the door, you can hear them. That's how loud they are. <laughs> they're really loud. So they would probably drive you crazy if you had them in a, you know, a, a real close setting to where you where you live but uh but that's another thing about purple martins if you do try to attract them there's there's about three four five tips that you just gotta do to get them first of all you gotta have a high house they don't like low houses so and when i say high i'm saying minimum of 12 feet and it 15 to 18 feet even better so you want a pretty high house the second thing is that, especially in your first years of attracting, and for me, it's proven 100%. I haven't even, I've never gotten them in anything else, and that is the gourds. The gourds are their, their preferred uh, house. Uh, you, you see all these purple Martin boxes all the time, these square houses and things, and like apartments. You know, I, don't get me wrong. Some people get Purple Martins in those. I, I know they do. And I've seen it more than once. My father-in-law got Purple Martins in his. But eight out of ten times, you're going to be fighting the sparrows and the starlings in those houses. And that keeps the Purple Martins away. Um, and that's not their preferred house. I'm seriously telling you, the gourds are their preferred house. If you put two of them up side by side, they'll go to the gourds first every time. Um Anyway, so the gourds, and then, and then the, uh, the next thing is, and this isn't so much for the attracting as it is for their safety, you have to have the gourds with the long tunnel. If you don't have the long tunnel, the owls and this, the hawks will eat them out of the, out of the gourd. Um, they will literally hang on the hole and stick their head through and eat the babies. Uh, how do I know? I know. And... Uh, Let's see, what is another uh, thing? Uh, they, uh, you need to have them in a very open area. Uh, you know, uh, if, if you can give them a minimum of 30 yards in any direction for flying in, that's you're better off. Uh, you, boy, if you got trees real close by, they're not going to come by. They're not going to, they're not going to live there. They need to have open space. It's also preferable if you can have a wire passing by fairly close by. They like to land on wires. And you need to have water reasonably close by. We've got our pond. We've got our creek. So that's perfect. And we got the big open field. we got the tall telephone poles there and the wires. Uh, I actually strung a wire between two telephone light poles out there. I put the poles in myself for lights for that arena. And then I strung a wire between them for the 
for the uh, Purple Martins to land on. And let's see, then the last thing is that uh, you need to have, uh, you, it's not absolutely critical, but it's very preferable to have a building close by. And there needs to be a little bit of activity occasionally, human activity. They actually seem to thrive on that. Um, they really don't work well when they're isolated. Like if I took one of those uh, pole, or, you know, houses and set it way back there in the back of the property, likelihood is I probably wouldn't get Purple Martins. They seem to know that they have a relationship with humans and they, you know, it, houses and things are actually kind of good as long as they're not too close. They need to have that fly-in space. That's about everything I know about Purple Martins in a... And more than you ever wanted to know, I'm sure. But anyway, uh, did any more questions pop up during that? Let's see, maybe one more. Nope, that's it. Well, that's going to be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. 123 viewers, and thank you very much. Uh, we will see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.